Hugh Edwards is set to be announced as the BBC's most expensive newsreader, despite being suspended last year. Yes, being paid for not reading the news. Well, the long-serving presenter was embroiled in controversy after allegedly uh, there were payments for nude images from a younger individual. He's yet to return to our screens, having been hospitalised with serious mental health issues. So we're asking just why is the sideline presenter still costing the licence fee payer potentially more than £400,000 a year. Yes, it's quite extraordinary. Let's pose that very question to former BBC royal correspondent Michael Cole. Uh, Michael, lots of people will be a little bit aghast at the sum that he's still being paid despite not doing his job. Good afternoon, Emily. Good afternoon, Tom. This is symptomatic of the waste that is endemic within the bureaucratic BBC. Precisely at the time, it's put up the licence fee by an inflation-busting sum to £169.50, a licence fee that uh, more people are ignoring, uh, and it's down to the honest people like you and me uh, to pay this sum. Uh, I wonder how uh, Hugh Edwards, who we see there, uh, squares this with his conscience. He's a much-advertised, church-going, Presbyterian Christian um, and um, he's taking money for nothing. Uh, it, it says in the Bible, uh, a labourer is worth his hire, which was quoted by Geoffrey Chaucer later. But uh, what in the case when the labourer is actually not labouring, but actually leaning on his shovel? Uh, and that has happened for a considerable amount of time, as you've just said, Emily. Mm. This goes to the absurdity, I repeat it, the absurdity of the BBC paying Hollywood sums to people mm. who are not worthy of those huge salaries. There are a 100 people within the BBC and broadcasting generally who could do that job. When I was at the BBC, I was there for a fifth of its existence. Newsreaders like Richard Baker, uh, Kenneth Kendall, Robert Dougal, Moira Stewart, they were all staff announcers on staff contracts, very modest sums of money, a fraction of what Hugh Edwards is being given. Uh, it is absurd because it's a false marketplace. Uh, those people who are getting these sums from the BBC could not go anywhere else, and I say that on the record, and <laughs> get such huge sums of the licence payers' money, our money. No, it is extraordinary, just a tenth of the salary allegedly being paid to Hugh Edwards would be a very good salary indeed. And yet, here he is on ten times that. But, but I suppose here, Michael, to, to mount a defence, Hugh Edwards has not been accused of any crime. Indeed, the police investigated and said no crime had been committed. This is uh, a, a man who has allegedly paid money for legal pictures from an albeit young adult. Uh, he is now uh, suffering serious mental health problems. Uh, is there not a moment here for compassion? Yeah, you've summed it up perfectly. He says, or people speaking on his behalf, say he's not well enough to face a BBC inquiry. Well, I think we're entitled to ask if he's not well enough after all this time, when will he be well enough? And to go back to what you were saying about salaries, let me just inject a little bit of personal <laughs> history. Uh, I worked for the BBC for 20, more than 20 years. My work won two Royal Television Society Awards. I covered wars, civil disturbances, riots, uh, bush wars. I was beaten up and put in hospital in, in Belfast, uh, and I contracted hepatitis in the jungles of Guat Guatemala during the confrontation wow. with Belize. It, the highest salary, ladies and gentlemen, I ever got in that time, wait for it, was £47,000. And I was proud to be a BBC reporter. Well, you were ludicrously <laughs> underpaid, Michael Cole. Ludicrously underpaid. Well, I was proud to do it, Emily, because I believed in public service broadcasting. I have to ask, does the BBC any longer believe in public service broadcasting? Or does it think it's gone to Hollywood?